Welcome to Tech Primus. In this video, we are going to see how to create a Spring Boot application which can connect to a MySQL database. So, I have a MySQL database installed in my machine. So, if you see here, I have a table called Users under the database called Test. So, I have two rows right now. So, what we are going to do is using the Spring Boot application, we are going to connect to this particular database and load the data and fetch the data. So, let's get started. So let's go to our usual website, the start.spring.io. So I'm going to create a project here. So I'm uh, creating the artifact as com tech primus db, and then I will just uh, give my project name as Spring Boot MySQL. So once uh, the video is done, I'll upload the same example into GitHub website. So you can take the uh, uh, clone the website from uh, clone the uh, repository from the um, GitHub repository from the description below. So the dependencies which you would require are the MySQL, the web, uh, so MySQL is nothing but the MySQL uh, JDBC driver which we need for uh, connecting to the MySQL database. Then we need the web, so Spring MVC and also we need the JPA. So via the JPA we are going to query the um, MySQL database. Okay, so I, I have already generated the project and I have already opened it in IntelliJ. So if you see here, this is the project, so this is the dummy project, nothing is there. So these are just the basic. Mm -hmm. basic files which uh, spring create so we don't require these three so let's go ahead and delete them so the only thing we need is the uh, application.yaml so where we have to provide the uh, driver class name the url the username password for the mysql database also what uh, whatever we need for the jpa so if we need to uh, generate so for example this hibernate.ddl.auto if you provide create here um, JPA will automatically create the tables for you so you don't have to do a create but uh, in our case we already have the table so I'm just uh, uh, putting an update or you can even make it as now okay so let's go ahead and create the necessary entities so what we need is the uh, repository so so what database we have is the users right so we have a users database with name salary team name Okay, so we need a JPA repository for that. So what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and creating a JPA repository. So I'm going to say users repository. So this is an interface. So we need to extend it from the JPA repository with the model. So I'm going to say users is my model and I'm creating a uh, integer. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this particular model under a different package, let's say model. Okay, so I'm going to annotate it with entity. Also, we have to define all the fields which are there. So the integer ID is a field. Then we have name. Sorry we have the name team name and also the salary so i'll create the constructors dummy constructor for Avenet. then we need the getters and sisters okay so what i am going to do is i'm going to annotate the id with the id Java persistence ID and then I'm going to say generate value so this is going to automatically generate the value also you can even provide the column name so you can even provide the column name saying what will be my column name so I'm going to say ID is my column name the same way for this guy the name would be mm, the column name for the name would be name same way for the team name For the team name, it is team underscore name. If you notice here, the column name for the team name is team underscore name. So I am just marking it as team underscore name. Same way for salary, I am going to say name equal to salary. Okay, so now our entity is done. Okay, so our repository is also done. So we need a rest endpoint so that we can persist and retrieve the data, right? So I'll create a resource. So I'll create a user's resource so that we can use that for retrieving or persisting the data. 
so I'm going to mark this as rest controller also I'm going to say use the mapping for rest slash users okay so that's the rest endpoint which we are going to use same way I'm going to say get mapping suppose let's retrieve the values so let's have a all public list of users get all so this is going to return the list of users which are there in the database okay what we need in here is the repository so i'll do a auto wiring of the repository okay i'm gonna say return users repository dot find out so what we need here is the complete list of users so we are just doing a file down here so meanwhile i'll add a post mapping so that we can insert the data into the database so what i'm going to do is i'm going to return the list of users okay just for uh, the purpose of viewing the data we'll persist the data and show everything okay so the persist mapping i'll name it as mm, slash load okay so let's say user slash load so now we will have a request body so request body is where our object is going to go so let's say we are going to push the users model itself okay so what we are going to do here is the repository dot save so this is going to save the data into the database and what we are finally going to do is retrieve all the records from the database and send it back as a response so when the user persists the user information it will return everything so that is what this particular uh, resource is doing okay now we need to register this particular jpa repository i think i already added here the annotation so we need to add the add enable jpa repositories and then we need to register our repository there as a base package so that is what i have done apart from that uh, we need the application.yaml information which we which i said right this, this is just the static information so the url is specific to the machine so uh, the mysql server is running in the localhost 3306 port and test is the database which i am going to connect to so if you see here in uh, test is the database so these are the different databases so i have test i have connected to test so we are going to connect to the same database username password is nothing for now in my local instance and these are some uh, configs which are specific to the jpa so i have enabled the sql um, so that we can see how the queries are going to the database how spring jpa is converting the converting the queries okay converting the repositories into queries basically so i think that's it uh, let us start the process so i'll just start the server so what we are doing is we have to we have exposed two rest endpoints one will give the list of users the other will load the user and then give the list of users as a response what is the error this is the okay what the bean non compatible bean definition so let's say what is the error user response is saying users is host mm -hmm. db dot user resource i think i have to do a clean i'll do a clean install because i wrote the, i use the same project for uh, my demo purpose but uh, yeah looks like it is having some class files which are lying out there which are not cleaned up so i'm just doing a clean up and install so this should be fine so i'll be fine so I, let's start it again let's start the process so meanwhile we can go to the rest endpoint and see so 
local slash so this is going to be in right now we don't have the application so let's have it ready so this is going to be the rest part so okay so looks like the application is up yeah so the application is up <clears throat> and if you see the i had hit the rest endpoint uh, user slash all and the, there is a query which got converted let me hit it again okay so you can see the second the query again getting printed okay so this particular information is now retrieved from the this particular information is now retrieved from the mysql database so if you see here the data which is there out there is this these two so now let's say we want to push some data so i'll go to postman i already have uh, the rest endpoint configured and also i have a body okay so let's push some information So I'll do a send. Okay, so what I have done is I had already a response here. So I am already inserting a data. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's insert some new value. Mm, yeah, I'll say ops. Okay, and I'll just I'll do this. Two thousand. So I'm going to insert two records. So I inserted Ajay already. So now I'm inserting again Jaga. So the response which we got here is the complete list here. If you see here. So let's go to the URL. <coughs> see, <coughs> we have received four responses. Okay, same way. Let's let me re refresh the table. Go to some other database and then come back. Okay, so you can see the four records. So these these were inserted as a part of the rest endpoint call which we did and it was if you see here the queries are printed here so there are insert queries here so there are two insert queries which got converted into the data which we see in the mysql database so that is how we can insert the data into the database so if you see here i'll reiterate what we have done here so spring needs to know which data source it needs to use so for that we need to provide the driver class name the url the username and the password to which it needs to connect so this is the configuration which we have to provide to spring so that it can use it to connect to the database so you don't have to create the database explicitly so spring takes care of that we just need to provide the relevant information for spring to take care of that same way for jpa you can provide the relevant inf information for jpa so that it can uh, we can create or update or whatever it can do based on the config which we have provided here and then we have to create a jpa repository with the model which we are going to use so in the model which is basically the entity we mark it as entity and then we provide the list of column names which are there and the primary id okay that's what we have done here and we have written a, a rest controller with some mapping with two rest endpoints one with all which will return all the users list the other would load the data into the database and again return everything back so this is how we load the data into the mysql database Hope you like this video. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you.